Now it's no surprise that some of the best whitetail hunting counties and states in the entire country are those states and those regions that include a lot of hills. And if you look at the Mississippi River in all the bluff countries that are along bluff areas in Minnesota and Wisconsin down to Iowa and Illinois, very, very hilly. Hills are incredible because all things being equal, even if you have the same number of hunters, the exact same hunting regulations. You know, a lot of times I hear Michigan people, it's this way in every state, but everyone else's states have the best game management, DNR management, whatever else. And I think that's a very poor excuse because there's so much you can do on your own land to dictate exactly how many deer you see. And you know, if you, if you have very few deer, don't shoot any does. Um, if, you're, if you have deer that are wary of your land during gun season, bow season, the rut, um, maybe shoot does outside that window. But all that being said, when you have hills and you have equal management and you have the same number of hunters, then you're still going to have a higher buck age structure that I've experienced in hill country versus flatland. And let's face it, deer have room to not only hide from you, but hide from each other. So you can have a lower stress herd, you can have pockets where deer hide, you can have a buck that you jump on one limb and you're trying to push him or your neighbor pushes him, he runs around a, a point, goes down over a bench, down across the hollow, up around a corner on the other side, and he only ran 300 yards, but he was never within visibility of anybody in the woods because he simply had those hills to hide him. Hills offer some great wind advantages. Um, the number one being, and this is the majority of my bucks that I've shot here over the last 17 years, 16, 17 years in Southwest Wisconsin is, I'm hunting high in the morning above those deer, and I'm using not only the terrain to take my thermals away and take and cheat the wind, but I'm also using the terrain for accessing my stand locations and not spooking the deer on the other side. What a huge advantage that us hunting, that we hunters, hunting in these hilly areas, in the hill country, whatever state, region it might be, for accessing your stands behind a hill, getting up to that stand location, and that's your point of ambush, that's your point of where deer can actually start to see you, maybe even start climbing up on the back side of that ridge, getting into your stand so you're covered up halfway up your tree. And then looking down on a bench, a flat, um, a point, uh, somewhere where deer are moving a pinch point that's on the other side of water hole, whatever it might be, but you're using that hillside as a point of ambush uh, to get to that location and uh, get to that location undetected. Hill country, huge advantage. Um, you know, you can hunt in the evening, of course, in hill country. I'm using points. I'm using the side wind on those points. So I have a point coming right down here. I have a stand in that location. I'm using my wind like this, knowing that that's going to fall more in the evening. And then I'm watching a movement that goes side to side right here. That's a lot of times the evening hunting. Evening hunts, I even hunt where there's a bench like right here, going back and forth with deer movement. I'm hunting down below with my wind blowing to either side, predictably. And then as it gets darker, that wind's falling off top. So I've actually shot deer uphill during the evening hours. But it all goes back to you can really not only take advantage of the wind, not only take advantage of older bucks that are in hill country compared versus flatland, but you can also access your stands non-invasively and in, get in and out of your land without spooking deer. And let's face it, that is the number one rule that you have to have on your property. It doesn't matter if your food plots, you're considering them as sanctuaries, you're not spooking out your bedding areas, but once you lay out your land and once you lay out your design of your habitat, which is what I help clients around the uh, north half of the country, 25 states so far do, is once you lay that out, then as long as you can access that design and that movement, and you're building that afternoon food source movement on your land or on public land that you find, as long as you can access non-invasively, then you're gonna have a great hunt. And if you can chip away at your stand locations without spooking your stand locations out, use the hill country and terrain to your advantage then you can have a property in these hills like this that just turns into a mature buck gold mine that has those bucks focusing on your land during late October, November, when it counts the most, not only for shooting one of them, but for protecting bucks, holding them, attracting them, advancing them to the next age class, improving sex ratios. We talk about bucks all the time, but those, that is the lowest hole in the bucket. And if you're maintaining a spook-free property and you're accessing your stands with a low impact, non-invasive approach, then boy, watch out because these hill countries and this hill country, these hills can establish a mega deer herd on your land that allows you to not only shoot mature bucks, but advance a large percentage of those, of those bucks to the next age class the following year within these hills.